This is a revision video for AQA GCSE Chemistry or Combined Science, looking at the seventh topic, Organic Chemistry. This video is a list of questions that can be answered using nothing apart from the specification for these exams. These are the key facts that you need to be able to recall. If you look in the description below, you'll find a link to the list of questions, and you can use these to test yourself or to make flashcards, and then use the video to check that you do know the right answers. Once you've completed this part of your revision, you'll be ready to move on to more complicated questions which ask you to apply this knowledge. Finite is a word used to describe resources that are running out faster than we can replace them. Crude oil was formed from the remains of ancient biomass, usually plankton, which were buried in sediment, so mud and sand, for thousands of years. Crude oil is a fossil fuel. It's finite and it's running out. Most of the molecules in crude oil are hydrocarbons. These are compounds made from hydrogen and carbon only, and most of them belong to the homologous series known as alkanes. Alkanes have the general formula CnH2n plus 2. This means that however many carbon atoms there are, there'll be twice as many hydrogen atoms and then an extra two. The first four members of the series are methane, ethane, propane and butane. These molecules all contain single covalent bonds. To draw ethane, we have a chain of two carbons, because ethane is the second alkane, and then each carbon is bonded to three hydrogen atoms. The formula of the alkane containing 10 carbon atoms will be C10H22. You can use the general formula from question 7 to work this out. The formula of the alkane containing 26 hydrogen atoms will be C12H26. Fractional distillation can be used to separate mixtures of liquids and gases into fractions that can be used for different uses. A fraction is a group of chemicals that all have similar boiling points, so when they're experiencing fractional distillation, they'll be extracted together. The fractions from crude oil can be used as fuels and also as feedstocks for the petrochemical industry. Examples include petrol, diesel oil, kerosene, heavy fuel oil and liquid petroleum gas. These can be used as solvents, lubricants, polymers, detergents, and of course, as fuels. The three most important words you need to remember when describing the process of fractional distillation are heating, evaporating, and condensing. But we'll go into a little bit more detail here because sometimes this turns up as a six mark question. So the first stage is that your mixture, your crude oil, is heated to about 350 degrees C. At this point, almost all of the alkanes are going to evaporate, although bitumen will be left behind because its boiling point is higher than the temperature of the furnace. Within the fractionating column, there is a temperature gradient. This means that it's hot at the bottom of the column and then cooler as you get higher up. The different fractions have different boiling points. The larger fractions have much higher boiling points and therefore they have a tendency to condense first. As the fractions rise up, the temperature cools, and as the temperature gets to be colder than their boiling point, the fraction will condense, and then because it's a liquid, it can be easily extracted. At the top of the column, the fractions are smaller, they have lower boiling points, they're less viscous, and they're more flammable, so they make better fuels. Combustion is another name for burning a fuel in oxygen. When an alkane completely combusts, this means it burns insufficient oxygen for everything to be oxidised. So the carbon becomes carbon dioxide and the hydrogen becomes water. If we completely combust propane, then of course we make carbon dioxide and water. And you can use the numbers in the left side of the equation to see that if there are three carbon atoms, you'll need to make three carbon dioxide molecules. If there are eight hydrogen atoms, you'll need to make four water molecules. And then if you then use those and add up the number of oxygen atoms, you'll see that you need five oxygen molecules. When an alkane incompletely combusts, you make carbon monoxide and water, although you may also make some carbon particulates if there's a particularly low amount of oxygen available. Cracking is the name we give to the thermal decomposition of alkanes. It's commonly the largest fractions of crude oil that are cracked. The large fractions are cracked because we have a much higher supply than demand, and they're not particularly useful because they don't make good fuels. The two products of cracking are a smaller alkane and also one or more alkenes. 
The two types of cracking are steam cracking and catalytic cracking. To do catalytic cracking, you need a zeolite catalyst and a high temperature of around 300 degrees C. Don't mention pressure because there is no credit at GCSE for talking about pressure in cracking. For steam cracking, we use steam as a catalyst and an even higher temperature, up to about 850 degrees C. Unsaturated molecules have covalent bonds that are not single covalent bonds. So the only named examples we meet at GCSE are those with double bonds, but a molecule that contained triple bonds would also be considered unsaturated. To test for alkenes, or indeed for any unsaturated bond, you use orange bromine water, which will turn colourless. It's really important that you're saying colourless, not clear. Bromine water is already transparent, it already allows light to be transmitted through it, but when it changes colour, it becomes colourless. Alkenes are used to make plastics by being polymerised, and they can also be hydrated to make alcohols. The general formula for alkenes is CnH2n. Alkenes are described as unsaturated because they all contain one double covalent bond. The first four alkenes are ethene, propene, butene and pentene. There are a few different ways that you could draw butene, but they all contain four carbon atoms bonded together and one double covalent bond. Make sure that each one of your carbon atoms is making four bonds in total. Obviously the double bond counts for two. The functional group of alkenes is that carbon-carbon double bond. When alkenes react with oxygen, they also produce carbon dioxide and water, but they tend to burn with a smoky flame, so they don't make as good fuels as alkanes do. When alkenes react with hydrogen, they make alkanes. And when they react with steam, they make alcohols. When they react with chlorine, they make chloroalkanes. When they react with bromine, as they do in bromine water, then they make bromoalkanes. So if we have propene reacting, then we would make this dibromopropane. And you can see that the two carbon atoms that used to have a double bond between them have each picked up one bromine atom. The functional group of an alcohol is the OH. The first four alcohols are methanol, ethanol, propanol and butanol. To draw propanol, you need to start with a three carbon chain. Somewhere on that molecule, it then needs to have an OH group to show that it's an alcohol. It doesn't matter whether this is on a terminal carbon or the central carbon, and it doesn't matter if you've drawn it on the terminal one, whether it's coming off the right hand side or if it's coming off the top or the bottom. When ethanol reacts with sodium, it will fizz, which we might describe as effervescence, because hydrogen gas is being released. When an alcohol burns in air, it produces carbon dioxide and water. And when an alcohol is added to water, it dissolves to produce a neutral solution. When alcohols react with oxidising agents like potassium permanganate, they produce carboxylic acids. Main uses of alcohols are as solvents, fuels and also in alcoholic beverages. Alcohol can be made either by fermentation, which uses yeast, in warm, wet, anaerobic conditions, or by the hydration of an alkene. The functional group of a carboxylic acid is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then single bonded to an oxygen that's bonded to a hydrogen. The first four carboxylic acids are called methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid and butanoic acid. Butanoic acid has a four carbon chain and the first three carbons look a lot like you're drawing an alkane, and then the final carbon has that carboxylic acid functional group. So a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and then single bonded to a second oxygen, which is bonded to another hydrogen. When ethanoic acid reacts with calcium carbonate, this will release carbon dioxide, which can be bubbled through lime water, which will turn cloudy. When an alcohol reacts with a carboxylic acid, it produces a molecule called an ester, and when ethanoic acid and ethanol react together, this produces an ester called ethyl ethanoate. When carboxylic acids are added to water, they produce a weakly acidic solution, so one that has a pH that's still lower than 7, but is comparatively high. Carboxylic acids are called weak acids because when they dissolve in water, they incompletely ionise to release hydrogen ions. A polymer is a very long chain of repeating units called monomers joined together by strong covalent bonds. 
When you make a polymer using ethene, it's called polyethene. Addition polymers are made from monomers that contain a double covalent bond. The number of atoms in an addition polymer will be exactly the same as the number of atoms in the monomers that made it, because there's only one product in an addition polymerization reaction. The repeating unit of polypropene will look like this. So essentially you draw propene, but you miss out the double bond because that double bond has broken. And instead we draw those bonds coming out the side, showing that they're now joined together in part of a polymer. And because this is a repeating unit, we have the brackets around it and we have the N to show that there are many of that repeating unit. A condensation polymer forms in a reaction that results in the loss of a small molecule. And that small molecule is often, but not always, water. Polyesters are formed when a diol, in other words, an alcohol with two alcohol groups, one on each end, reacts together with a dioic acid. So a carboxylic acid with a carboxylic acid group on each end. And they polymerize together, and each one of those reactions where the carboxylic acid and the alcohol join together results in the loss of a water molecule. The four naturally occurring polymers listed in the GCSE chemistry specification are DNA, protein, starch, and cellulose. You might also have thought of glycogen, which is listed in your biology specification, but not specifically in your chemistry specification. An amino acid is the small molecule that proteins break down into. Here's glycine, which is an example of an amino acid. The rest of the amino acids look very similar, but this hydrogen here can be replaced by a number of other groups of atoms, say a methyl group. So all amino acids are going to have this amine group on the left-hand side, a nitrogen bonded to two hydrogens, and this carboxylic acid group on the right hand side. When amino acids polymerize, they make polypeptides. And these polypeptides are then processed further. So for instance, they're folded and multiple polypeptides put together to make proteins. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And the function of DNA is to encode the genetic instructions for the development and functioning of living organisms and also of viruses. DNA has a double helix structure consisting of two polymer chains made from four complementary nucleotides. Starch is made out of glucose and so is cellulose. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you found this a useful introduction to your Unit 7 Chemistry Revision. If you did find it useful then don't forget to like and subscribe below for more GCSE Chemistry Revision videos coming soon.